Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make these hot water bottle covers. Um, this one is made with King Cole Chunky Yarn, and this one is made with DK. Um, I've also used a gold thread uh, yarn, which I bought from B&M, just a, a real cheap little gold thread. And I've used a running stitch along this one to make the buckle. And with this one, I did it as a um, a chain stitch just going through the fabric. I also made some little discs out of um, just just to crochet a round disc to make the buttons. So I'm going to make another one. I'm going to make the larger size and I'm going to make it with this belt part just a little bit further down about halfway and I'm going to put some buttons above and under on this one. So for the top I have used a I think this is where are we? A robin fleece yarn. Can't really see it. It's very fleecy in in the way. Um, I've had this for quite some time, but it's just uh, any fleece yarn will do. You can either do it um, with just plain white yarn, or a tinsel yarn, or something like that. Anything you want to edge it with. But I thought it looked quite snowy, so. I would uh, I would use that. So I'm going to pause this video now while I get ready to start the tutorial. Okay, so for this particular tutorial, I'm going to be using, as I said, it's uh, King Cole Chunky, but any will do. I like the King Cole because it is really squishy and soft. And um, these were full balls, but I've got several that are um, kind of started on, so I'm just going to be using them. But this is the, um, the band that went around it. But any chunky yarn will do. Um, I've got a black for the belt, red for the mane and the fleecy yarn. I also am going to be using a six millimeter crochet hook and a pair of scissors and a darning needle, which um, is in my case. But thankfully with this project, you don't need to sew up a great deal. So I'm going to um, explain that I kind of designed this um, hot water bottle so that you, the same tutorial makes both the large one and the small one. And the way that I did it was that for the small one, it's the same number of stitches, exactly the same tutorial, but instead of using chunky yarn, you use a three, a DK three, and a four millimeter crochet hook will get you this, this baby size one. Um, but by using the six millimeter and a chunky yarn, you'll get one that's big enough for the large hot water bottle. So how I'm going to start this, um, as I say, I've got quite a few of these little odd oddments. Let's get some yarn out. And we start by making a slip knot. Now you can do that however you like. I do have a tutorial on how to do the slip knot and magic ring if you want to use watch that first. But you'll need to do 25 chain. And the chain is yarn over and pull through. Simple as that. Yarn over, pull through yarn over, pull through. So that is three. I'm going to pause the video and I'll I'll come back again once I've got 25. So now I have 25 chain and um, I also have a cup of tea. So that's cool. Now, I'm not keen on long stitches. You've probably heard me say this before if you've been seeing my videos. So this particular hot water bottle I'm doing with a half treble. That's a UK term, half treble, and in the US it's a half double. So how we're going to do that is um, by going into the second chain from the hook. So this loop doesn't count. There's our first. This is our second and we're going to work into here. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to go into the top loop only. Yarn over and pull up a loop so I have three on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. I didn't really, it's a bit tight for some reason, there we go. So I'm going to do that in every chain, so going to the next one, same way, yarn over and insert, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And I'm going to do that in every stitch till the end. So you'll have 24 stitches um 
along. So I'm going to pause the video and I will meet you at the end of the row. Right, so I'm at the very last stitch here. That there is my knot. You can see that. It's a, my knot looks a little big, but it isn't. So in this last stitch, I'm going to do three. So that's three half trebles or half doubles in the US. Move that tail down so it's not in the way. Can't really see what I'm doing now. I'm just going to pause the video. I'm going to get my glass. I know there, that's better. I don't know if you it's doing the same for you, but because it's red and I'm under the light, it's uh, quite often difficult to see, but you'll lose the effect of Christmas altogether if I don't use the red. So I'm going to finish off by doing another two in this end stitch to complete the three. And now, instead of doing a chain and turning, I'm going to continue around this side. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to work over this tail, so I'm going to hold it flat against it. And I'm going to go into each stitch along. Uh, that's why I wanted to just go into the one loop, so that I could go along this whole edge again in the other loop. So I'm just going to do one in each of these chains, working over the tail until I get to the other end. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to do one half treble or half double in the US in every of my other side of the chain until I get to the end and I'll show you what to do. Well, I've got to my very last stitch and so as I already have one in there, I'm going to do another two into that last stitch. That hole's got a little big for my liking. And then I'm just going to slip stitch into the very first stitch. And so now we've made something that looks like this. So I'm going to do one chain to get up to the height and I'm going to do what I want to do is I want this one here to be an increase. So I'm just going to do one stitch in each of the first row. And then when I get to this end, I'm going to increase. So I'm going to pause the video. I want you to do one uh, half treble in each stitch until you get to this end. And then I will show you what to do. Okay, so I've reached all the way along. So that's my 24th stitch. So in the end, I'm going to do three. And then I'm going to do one in all the these stitches all the way along on here. And when I get to the end here, I'm going to do my increase into this stitch and join. So I'm going to pause the video and I will catch up with you when I get to this end. Okay, so I'm all the way around and in this next stitch, I'm going to do three. And that completes all of our increases. And so now I'm going to slip stitch into my first stitch and that means I'm going to have a total of 55 stitches. So now I'm just going to do one chain and I'm going to do one half treble in each stitch around and then join with the slip stitch and do that for every single row until my work measures. Now if you wanted if you wanted it to look like this, where your um, belt is up here and you've got two buttons at the bottom, then you just um, just put your hot water bottle in and then you can judge where you want your rows of black to go. But I'm going to do this one a little bit lower down, about here. So I've got half and half of red separated by the black. Although I do like this one, I must admit. 
um, but that's what I'm going to do for this one. So you just need to keep going until it measures um, high enough for you to want to put your black band. It's completely your preference. Um, with the little one, I did it halfway. Um, I haven't put any buttons on it yet, but I might do, but they, are, they will be smaller, just one each end. So that's what it will look like with a button each side. Or you, the bigger one, obviously, would just be a larger scale. So, don't know if you watched my previous uh, video uh, where we were going up in rounds like this. Um, I showed you that on one row, if you go into the same stitch as your turning chain and then on the subsequent row you go into the next stitch then you'll keep your edges straight so if you wanted to do that by all means you can but we're just going to do one half treble in every stitch all the way around and i'm going to have trouble getting it in to that last that first one okay so and when every now and then just count that you still have 55 stitches because you don't want it to taper in. And I know at the moment it doesn't look wide enough for the hot water bottle, but it will come out. Because obviously you've, you want, the, the hot water bottle's not square, it's got a kind of a, a shape like this at the bottom. So um, this is obviously your inside there, and that's the outside. So we're just gonna go all the way around, one half treble or half double US in every stitch, no more increasing at the corners and I will meet up with you when we get to this point and I'll show you what to do. Hi, so I've done my 55 stitches. You'll see there's, it looks like there's a bit of a gap here and that's okay. That's because we went into the very same stitch, um, or the, the next one over, sorry, as this one. So now what we need to do is go into that first stitch and do a slip stitch and it will pull it right over. Now I don't want you to worry about that, that's perfectly fine. So now it's going to it look a little bit like a boat now, like a kayak. So that's perfectly how it should look, there's nothing wrong with that. And we're just going to keep doing that for um, as long as we need until we want to do our black row. So this time we could do a chain to start and um, I'm going to go in the next one. There's our stitch we've just gone into. I'm going to go into the next one along and do my stitches all the way around and slip stitch into the last one as normal. I think I caught a bit of the yarn there. The trouble with this kinko is lovely and soft, but it does split just that little bit. There we go, it's better. So do one in each all the way along. It doesn't help that I'm sitting at an odd angle to crochet when you're doing a tutorial. It's not quite how you would normally sit. Um, so go all the way around and slip stitch into this stitch as normal and keep going until your work measures, however long you want it to be. And um, then I will pause the video now and show you once I've got to that stage, how we change and do the black rounds. Hi everyone, and here I am again. I'm going to pop in my um, hot water bottle and so oops knock the camera off so pop it all the way in and then you can see it's kind of let's try and move this up a little bit it's halfway up the hot water bottle that I want to put my black lines in fits nice and snugly there sort of there's a bit of room so once it's expanded because it's got water in it it shall be fine so let's take that out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the black yarn. So I'm going to cut this red off. Take that aside. Bring in my black. Get some yarn out. Careful not to tangle it with the other yarn. And then there's my stitch. So when I do my slip stitch, I've locked it. <laughs> I think I might have caught it. No. It's here somewhere. Just sing amongst yourselves while I find it. Okay, hold on to it this time. Um, that's my red end, there it is. So I go in to do my slip stitch as usual. I'm gonna hold on to that yarn 
and instead of coming back through with the red I'm going to come through with the black and I'm going to turn it over and tie those off just so that um, they're nice and snug there and not going to come undone at all and now I'm going to do exactly the same as I did before only with black yarn so that one was I lent across so this one will be in the same stitch I'll do my and I'm going to try and work over those tails I like a minimum amount of um, sewing in of ends um, I'm not the best end sewer I kind of don't have the patience for it really so now we're just going to do three rows exactly the same in the black all the way along working over the tails actually it does help if you have the red one at the front and then you see it less that was uh that's better you'll see the difference now they will hide more so once uh, you get more rows and plus if you pull them a little tighter so you just continue in the black for three rows and then I will meet you once we've done and finished the three rows of black. Okay, so I'm all the way round. I cut off my black. So I've done three rows. Sorry, I've got a bit of a hair attached to it there somehow. I'll have to get that out in a minute. And that's a bit of twine, sort of very odd kind of twiny hair thing, fibre. So I'm going to finish off this slip stitch with the red to change back the colour, bend that forward, just pull that a little tighter because it was loosening off and just tie these, tie these off a little bit so that they are secure and then I'm going to continue in the red until it measures to the neck of my bottle because when I get to this part not right up here but when I get to about this part where it meets the shoulders here I need to do a row for the tie you can either tie it with a chain cord like I've done some people make those eye cords or you can do it with ribbon anything you want but we need to make a I'll show you on the finished one if I can reach it um, if you can see it, it's um, a little a row of openings, if you like, so that I can thread that cord through. So we're at, once it gets to about that part, but we've got a few rows to go yet. I'd say once we've done a few more, maybe about that much, we need to reassess it. So I'm going to continue working in the red, and um, once I get to I pop it in you'll be able to see just keep offering it in and you will see where you're up to make sure it goes all the way to the bottom and then you can see that you really you've got about that much to do in the red until you get to about here this is the part when it measures to about there about as wide as my hand then we've got to start thinking about the uh, the row for the tie but we've got a way to go yet so i'm going to pause the video and i will see you when we have done around about that much more in the red of course i should explain that it's it's more important to measure it against your hot water bottle than it is for me to tell you how many inches to do because they're not all going to be the same size uh, and it really depends on how long yours yours is so um, it's best just to pop it in and then you'll be able to see and judge when you need to stop so I will pause the video and I will catch you again once um, we've done a bit more of the red okay so I've now got my um, rows all the way up to the neck so the next row is going to be making the basis for the cord so how we do that is quite simple just 
bear with me while I get my yarn in the right place. Limited space here. So we do a chain and another chain. So the first one is to replicate a stitch and the second one is a chain space. We skip one and then we'll do our half treble into the next stitch. And then we'll do a chain, skip one, and half treble into the next stitch. And we do that all the way along until we get back to the start again. And then we'll make sure that we join it with a chain space. And so they're all completely even. And they'll look like this all the way along. You see that? So again, it's just one chain. I've gone off camera, sorry. I've, um, it moved while I was, there we are. It moved while I was uh, crocheting all that space. So it's one chain, miss one, and one half treble. In the next space, one chain, miss one, and one half treble. So as you can see, the first one, just in case it was off camera, the first one is the classed as the stitch. And then, so when we get round to this side, we will slip stitch into that one there and it will pull it out into the neat little square that they've all become. So we just continue around one chain, miss one, and a half treble, half double in the US into those next stitch. Just like that, all the way around until we get back to the start. So I'm gonna pause the video and I will see you back at the start. Okay, so I've got all the way around. I'm going to do my chain space and not into the first chain, but the second one up. I'm going to slip stitch into there. Oh, I didn't get into it. it does help if you actually burrow into the actual stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch into there to complete that. Now, if I show you on my completed one, uh, once I've, I did my row there, I did three more rows. Um, and that's because when I made the small one, I didn't. I went straight from that row. I did one row and then I did my, my white. Now, this neck obviously is smaller on this particular one anyway, being as that small. But I, when I finished it, I think I preferred it if I'd made another row at least of the red. So on this one, I did three. And the first row, how we've got to get back to our full complement of stitches. Just gonna pull out some yarn. So what we do is we will do our chain and then we're going to do a half treble into the gap and a half treble into the actual stitch, which is a bit difficult to get into sometimes. It doesn't have to be that perfect. You could just do two. That must be a bit tight, that one. You could just do two into the stitch. It wouldn't actually make a great deal of difference as long as you've got the full complement of stitches and my hook keeps bashing my camera, so I do apologize. It is easier from a different angle to get into, just not so easy from this one when you're doing a tutorial. There we are. The first one was just a bit on the tight side. And we just do that all the way along. One into the stitch and one into the chain space. And that gets us back up to the right amount of stitches. And then we'll just join as usual once we get to the start. So I'm gonna pause the video and I will meet you back at the So I've made it all the way Back. I'm just about to slip stitch into my first stitch. Now I'm going to do another couple of rows of red. You can do um, either one or two, but I think it looks better with the uh, white top being this size. So I did three rows. So I'm going to do another couple of rows um, and or rounds, should I say. So I'm going to pause the video and I will pick you up again once I've done those two rows. Right now I've got all the way to the end so I'm now going to join uh, my last 
row with a slip stitch and this time oops come out this time I'm going to completely end off with the red and then I will join the white um, anew so it's easier to, to do that with the last way so I'm going to end this tutorial here this will be part one and in part two I'm going to show you how to do the white top and the decoration um, otherwise this is going to be a very long tutorial so I'm going to finish this one here and part two will be along shortly with um, with the rest so thanks so much for joining me if you haven't already click on the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and you'll be informed when part two's up and all the other videos that i uh, put out and live chats and my giveaways which um, don't forget to enter um, there's quite a few going at the moment thanks so much for everybody for, for, for tuning in with me and um, stay um, sharp looking out for part two thanks very much bye for now